Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. I'm back to, to boxing, I'm back to home. The, the genesis of this channel, where I started in the boxing landscape, I got to give my reaction to Tank Davis, the knockout victory over Ryan Garcia, 136-pound super fight at catch weight. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable matchup between two undefeated fighters. Somebody's O has got to go. And in the case, it was Ryan Garcia going down in the seventh round to a vicious left hook to the body. Um, it was a delayed reaction, very much like a grenade shot. It reminded me of Bernard Hopkins' shot on Oscar De La Hoya to the liver, which is ironic considering Oscar De La Hoya allowed Ryan Garcia to take this fight and, and the whole situation they've gotten into. But um, I just want to give my immediate reaction upon watching this and what this means for boxing and, and these two fighters and, and where they go from here. Um, Tank is in his prime, and he's reaching that age in his late late 20s where I thought defensively tonight, him sitting on Ryan Garcia's left hook, not allowing him to get to his power and where he is, uh, been very explosive with that shot. Tank really kind of let him um, have those openings for, for his right hand. And you saw when, when he missed Ryan Garcia, that is, Tank made him pay dearly, especially in the second round um, with the left hook that hit flush and, and, and floored Ryan Garcia's second round, right? So, I mean, going back, um, there's going to be a lot of discussion about the, the concessions in this fight, uh, the rehydration clause, them even fighting at 136, which doesn't make sense to me, considering Tank Davis had no problem fighting Mar uh, Barrios at 140, and Barrios is now a Walter Wade at 147. Um, I think he was recently fighting Keith Thurman, right? So Barrios is at 147. He fought 140, no problem. And, you know, obviously Tank could get up to there. But that's where guys like Al Heyman, Leonard Ellerby, Floyd Mayweather, they're playing chess. And you and Andre Ward said this pre-fight, you get what you can negotiate. And they're going to ask for clauses. They're going to do certain things. And somebody young and dumb like Ryan Garcia, and that's not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but somebody young and dumb like Ryan Garcia who thinks, you know, they can beat anybody is going to take those things. And when you're the bigger guy, I've always said this, whether it's Oscar De La Hoya versus Manny Pacquiao, um, several different situations I've seen in the past where the bigger guy comes down for no reason, especially about 140, in my opinion, um, with none of these clauses in there. I still think Tank would have won. I think tonight he actually proved he is he is leaps ahead. He is literally in his prime. I don't think the clauses and the weights and all that thing were, were differences in terms of outcome. I do think Ryan was a little drained. I will say that. Um, however, the reckless, recklessness that Ryan started that second round with was ridiculous. And when you're fighting a, a guy like a Tank Davis, who's as explosive and as good a counter puncher as we have in boxing right now, um, he will make you pay for those type of mistakes. And you, when, when Ryan Garcia missed as wide as he did, that was food for Tank. In the rest of the fight, you could see he commanded the ring. He commanded – defensive control was excellent. Um, and that's why I say Tank right now is in his – to me, he's in his prime. Because the defense where Tank has gotten, you know, was well, Gamboa fight, the Barrios fight at times, you know, certain things he gave up. He smothered those things defensively tonight. He was great with when he needed to hold, when he needed to get into the clinch. Um, finding range, finding timing. Tank right now, to me, is the best I've seen in the sport in terms of finding his timing and, and patience. He doesn't get flustered if he's down a few rounds. Doesn't matter to him. He will find his timing, and he will get to his spot, and he will get to his shots. Um, and he most certainly did that tonight. You saw Ryan started trying to you know get his hands up a little bit more, which they talked about pre-fight. Tank told him, get your hands up, get your hands up, get your hands up. And as Ryan gets his hands up, subtly over the rounds, Tank would land left hook to the body, right hand to the body, straight right to the body, left hook to the body. And that's actually the determining factor in terms of the outcome of this fight in the seventh round. Tank Davis, the d delayed grenade shot to the left, boom. Ryan Garcia 
nose is bleeding, body shuts down. He cannot go any more fights over. Now, in terms of boxing, uh, as Tank Davis said, he's a prize fighter, right? He's here. He's here to get bread. He's here to make money. Um, so whether he, you know, sticks around at 135 or goes up to 140, I actually think he's going to go to 140. I think there's, there's money there for him to be made. Um, especially as he's getting older and, you know, from a 135 perspective, obviously the next, you know, big event, I'm not counting whatever Canelo is about to do. I, I don't think that's a big fight in my opinion, other than Canelo's name being involved. So I think the next big fight to me is Devin Haney versus Vasily Lomachenko. Um, on May 20th, as Devin Haney is currently the undisputed lightweight champion of the world at 135. So that, to me, is a big fight. You have Shakur Stevenson now at 135, who's, who's you know, dr you know ramping up and ready to, to, to assume his superstardom. Where does Tank Davis go to, to make his money, right? Uh, because the possibilities are endless. He could stay and live there at lightweight and try to, you know, wait for the winner of there. Like he has the cachet. He's the one that's going to have the pay-per-view vibes. He's the one that's the explosive knockout artist. He's the one that has that, the boogeyman aspect over boxing right now. You can't have a pound for pound top 10, maybe in a top five without Tank Davis in that, on that list. You can't have that right now. I mean, it's, 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 it's a small list when you really think about it. And Tank Davis is on that list. Now, Ryan Garcia, I think you regroup, you go back to 140, and you learned your lesson in terms of the business of boxing. You and, and please go and heed the advice of Andre Ward. Don't ever accept terms. You know, again, Al Heyman, Leonard Ellerby, Floyd Mayweather, they know how to do business. They know how to make money, and they will always put themselves in a position to win. That's why I respect these brothers. It's smart business. And Ryan Garcia, you were a young man. You have a lot to learn. You were not, honestly, Ryan Garcia was not ready to be in a fight like this. Watching that fight. He was not ready to be in a fight like this. Because because other guys have performed better. I mean, he looked he looked like he was in the same classes. I mean, Roley did better than, than Ryan Garcia did. Let's be honest. Roley did better than, than Ryan did. Roley at least, you know, made, you know, put some rounds together or whatever until he got knocked out. But... Barrios, who's already gone up, I think, to, like I said before, gone up to Walter Waite, you know, had some moments before he started hitting the canvas. But but Tank is special. Tank's an all-timer in terms of that power, in terms of that raw timing, his ringed IQ. His IQ is so underrated. Tank Davis' IQ is so underrated. I mean, the only question you can ask him is, dude, why did you just fight this at 140 and just leave no doubt and no excuses? But as Andre Ward said again, I'll repeat myself, you get what you negotiate. So, good fight, good night. Um, Ryan, I think, stays at 140. Maybe you go, you know, you look at the Teofimo Lopez's and, you know, you try to work your way up from there. Um, but fighting at 136 ain't the move no more, brother. You got to go up 140 and beyond. Be comfortable um, and, and don't strain the body that you, like you did today because you got exposed very badly. Um, in that regard, from a ring, ring journal, journalmanship um, across the board, just you're dealing with somebody in their prime that's special and and uh and, and it turned into food for tank quite frankly guys i appreciate it hit that like button subscribe little boxing corner i'll be back um you know i want to have some boxing corner videos every now and again just you know it's a fight it's a sport i love it's the sport i grew up on it's the first sport i fell in love with uh even before football i'm a boxing head through and through so if you like what you heard tap in subscribe like peace